only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke. Daddy, so much that should have been said of the perpetual folly of mankind, always thinking there's more time. Well, like many others before us, the realization only hits home when befallen by such a tragedy. This has been so unexpected that translating anything to words has proven harder than we could have imagined. A lifetime of anecdotes, where to begin? We'll start with the names. You were the earthly possessor of the name Jeremiah, whose mission covered some of the most turbulent and tumultuous decades in biblical history. Your father, James Ramsey, named you Jeremiah and tasked you with a similar fate. Your shoulders were strong, strong enough to carry the weight. You knew your purpose and you accomplished it. You never faltered. Courageous and daring in every way, you stayed true to the essence of who you are till your last day. Daddy, you were a warrior and with each one of us you took pause to name because resonating within you was an organic understanding of a name's sacred soul. She, or he, who is the earthly possessor of a warrior's name, is beholden to that name. You knew this. You did not name any of us after you to ensure that we would discover our own purpose in our name's sacred soul. A warrior's label was thus your gift and reveled in each name, lay your challenge to us to be watchers, protectors of creation, keepers, seekers of universal knowledge, to be courageous, never to falter, to stay grounded, to seek our purpose and remain true to it. Zanato, an ever extraction name, a command meaning the darkness must cease. A name you made up and gave to your first child during the difficult times in Ghana as you hoped for an end to the corruption and economic hardship. Your second child, Ya Santua, of Asante extraction in modern day Ghana. You named her after Nanda Ya Santua of Ejisu, the queen mother who led her people to war against the British colonialist after the king of the Asante kingdom was exiled. Your third child, Amina, a name of Arabic extraction. You named her after the warrior queen, Amina of Zaria, in modern day Nigeria. The first woman to become a ruler in a male dominated society. She expanded the territory of the Hausa people to its largest borders through conquest and opened up trade routes amongst others. Kimathi, of Kikuyu extraction in Kenya. You named him after Dedan Kimathi, a Mau Mau military and spiritual leader who led his people in several uprisings that led up to the independent struggle against the British colonial rulers. Indeed, the names you chose for us epitomized your already concretized beliefs in Pan-Africanism. Perhaps it's no surprise that you created a bridge between members in the diasporan community and their ancestral home in Ghana in what became known as Panifest. Perhaps at our earliest memories of the giant for many years we thought you were. Larger than life, adventurous spirit that was always the toast of every occasion with your dashing lady love by your side. Oftentimes, we would only see you on weekends as you would traverse to the country non-stop on your nation-building crusade. On the occasions we would come by the castle during the week, you were always working but never tired, always heavily concerned with the country's affairs, but somehow making time to eat and exchange stories with your staff. You were always a man of the people, your people, 
they were a part of you. You wanted us to learn discipline, self-defense, but most importantly, a sense of community as we sparred three times a week for many years with other club members in the Taekwondo club of the, of the castle with members from the Osu locality. You taught us all to drive first on your lap when our fingers could barely grasp the steering wheel and with time in the Accra Plains and in Akusi over the weekends. You introduced us to water sports and of course your second love, flying. In all your lessons with us, there was no time like the present to learn, to live, to experience the wonder and majesty of the Creator by conquering fear, mastering your skill, and trusting that you were created to do. You excelled at reinforcing that age was no restriction to boldness and adventure when you learned how to skydive after age 50. You were an artist at heart. Your portrait pencil sketches but a preview of your natural talent. Your craftsmanship saw you recycle disposed bits of parachute and plane parts to construct all manner of furniture and decor in the house, reflective of yours and your wife's artistic abilities. You were highly intuitive and perceptive and spent time with each of us separately and collectively to impart your lessons on everything ranging from logic and reasoning problems and spirituality to global geopolitics and more. Whenever we asked you a question, you would ask us what we thought about the subject, in the end, allowing us to arrive at our own conclusions. At other times, you would just offer a candid opinion in a few concise statements and move on. You had the most wicked sense of humor and love to make fun of people. One learned to develop a thick skin after years of exposure to it. When it was time for us to go to boarding school, you took pride in setting up your barber's shop on the compound of the house, skillfully cutting our hair with such ease that some of us, don't worry, I won't mention your name, thought that we could do just as well before hacking our cousin's hair to the most shocking yet hilarious spectacle. Later, the drive to boarding school was always your pride of place, taking Zanetto and Yasantua to Wesley Girls. You and mom would always ensure that you visited during the term, and in my case, Amina's case, I beg your pardon, you would regale her friends with stories about the time in Achmota and the mischief that you got up to. You mastered every aircraft that you flew, defying gravity with each flight. Your flying gave you the eyes of an eagle and added dimension to your perspective on the situation on the ground, literally. Even among the clouds, you were an artist. You were a master of the skies. Your skill as a pilot was so well and pur purposefully honed, yet never giving way to fearless recklessness, fully understanding that an element of fear is a requirement to anticipate danger never sub succumbing to the mundanity of life. You raised us to challenge the ordinary and to push beyond our comfortable boundaries. You taught us to stand up for those who could not, even at the risk of standing alone. We were never too young or too small to be privy to your thoughts, which you shared on world politics, on the inequity of the world economic system, on the plight of people of Africa. With every stage of our lives, you remain consistent with your mantra on life. Walk your path, know your purpose, live your life, make your mistakes and learn from them. Take ownership of your actions. In all this, be guided by your inner spiritual radar. Most importantly, never let your feet leave the ground. You always spoke with such pride about our valiant officers and men of the armed forces, the precision of our Air Force, and lamented angrily about the cowardice of those not willing to seek out truth or fight for what is just, not just for oneself, but for one's fellow Ghanaian in the face of adversity. And of course, 
let's not forget the incorruptible knights and guardians that stood by you, believing in your vision in Ghana. Whatever your faults, whatever your shortcomings, you always thought about the health and well-being of others before yourself. And it's such a shame that not every individual got to see or experience that about you. However, we take solace in the fact that enough hearts were touched by you. Whether it was paying school fees of numerous students, telling your family to squeeze in the car while you gave countless strangers a lift on the motorway, or giving a very well accomplished academic student a flight in one of the aircrafts. Since your passing, we have been inundated by testimonies of the number of people you supported. Your kindness knew no bounds. Soldier, warrior, father, grandfather, sage, friend, daddy, thank you for sharing your life with us. Thank you for teaching us to be and to do. Your work is done. You're free now, so walk briskly and purposefully as you do among the ancestors. You will always be our warrior garden.